post-processing is a powerful way to quickly and easily make your game feel more polished. Adding effects like bloom on your lights, we can use hue shifting, lens distortions, deepening of shadows, all of those sorts of things can really make your game feel a whole lot more professional. I'm Matt with Night Run Studio, and in this video, we're gonna show how to set up and explore post-processing to take your visuals to the next level. Let's get started. For those of you just joining us in this video, I'm gonna do a quick run through of how to download and set up the Universal Render Pipeline, but if you want a more in-depth version, you can head back to the lighting video for that. So let's head on over to our package manager, where we're just gonna go to the Unity registry and download the Universal RP. With the URP downloaded, we now just need to create a Universal Render Pipeline asset that will allow us to actually employ the URP in our project. So you can head on down to your assets window, right click, and we're going to go to create rendering. For me, it's right down at the bottom and you'll have a number of options here. We're just gonna be using URP asset with 2D renderer for this project. This will actually create two assets, which we just need to hook up in order to get started. So you can now head to your project settings. We're gonna to go to the graphics tab and just at the top here, we're gonna to want to click the little circle and drag in our URP asset. It should automatically show you the one that you're supposed to use. You can hit continue. Next, we'll head to the quality tab. And once again, we're just gonna to go to the empty box here under rendering, hit the circle and select the URP asset that fits. You can close up your project settings and there's just one last step and this one's actually optional. I'd only recommend it if you're running into trouble as most projects seem not to need it. But we can quickly open up the render pipeline converter. You can check out more details on the Unity site, but this just takes your existing assets and converts them to the URP. This does make irreversible changes to your project, so I recommend doing a backup before taking this step. At this point, once you've selected the necessary objects, you can just initialize and convert. And with that step, we are now ready to go. Once the URP is all set up, we can right click in our hierarchy, go down to volume, and we're gonna use a global volume, which just will apply these effects to everything in the scene. At this point, you can head over to your inspector where you can toggle between modes, but what we're just gonna need now to get started is to create a new profile. When you click new, it will automatically make a new folder with the name of whatever scene you're in, and that will have its own global volume asset. I'm gonna go back to my global volume on the hierarchy where we can just go to the volume and start adding overrides. I'm gonna begin with bloom, which is a favorite of many and I've clicked all to toggle everything on, and at first you'll see there's no effect. That's just because our intensity is at zero. And by adding values here, we can actually decrease and increase the amount of bloom effect that we get on any light objects in our scene. Now, if for some reason you're finding that the post-processing effects aren't doing anything, there's a good chance your camera just isn't set up correctly. You can just click on your main camera and you're going to want to expand the rendering drop-down box. In here, there's a tick box for post-processing and turning that on fixes this problem in most cases. One other important thing here is the scatter, which just affects how diffuse or pointed the bloom effect is. And you can toggle that around to get the effect you want. You can really have some fun with Bloom if you've added different layers of light. For example, my player only interacts with the shafts of light and not the light in behind, just because I made the light only affect his layer. And so I can get a cool Bloom effect when he goes through the light that just really emphasizes the effect of those bright shafts. Now you don't have to actually have light in your game for Bloom to work. For example, I can pop over into this other scene here, which has no light at all, but just has some brighter white colors. At this point, I can bring bloom into effect, and when I add intensity, you'll see that the white colors in the scene just become more diffuse and bright, or blooming. And I can actually just make the scene feel a little more bright and sunny, and then play around with the scatter as well. A bright scene like this is also a great place to play with another effect, which is chromatic aberration. This just gives a neat effect of distortion to your scene, so something like an old VHS tape with a sort of bending and rainbowing of color around the edges. Another effect I like a lot is color adjustments, and specifically I love being able to hue shift just to change the colors within a scene. This can just allow for some neat color variations or something that other people might find more specific is the color filter itself. And by adding, for example, a light blue filter, you can make it feel a little bit more like nighttime. You can also add warmer or colder colors or play with the tint altogether and give it a darker look. The hue shifting can be especially powerful in a scene like this with a cave where I can just 
sort of change the color to give it a magical feel or even just a warmer or colder feel by using different colors. Another color adjustment that I really like to add to my games is if you have a scene that you want to feel bright and happy, you can increase saturation to make those colors pop just a little more. Common thing done in games like Super Mario Brothers. In contrast, if you have a darker scene or like a cave and you want, you can use a decrease in saturation to kind of draw the color out of the scene and make it feel a little more drab. Now, not all these effects will totally work in a 2D game. However, one other effect that I like to work with is shadows with midtones and highlights. I'll apply all of those and this just allows you to sort of make those bright colors pop a little bit more by increasing the highlights or decreasing them. And you can also deepen shadows by dragging that slider up. Vignette is another popular effect and all this does is when you increase the intensity it sort of brings a circle in around the outside, kind of makes it feel like an old film. Now this effect isn't totally in place in this scene, but if you have a more gothic or darker type scene, or even just something like a cave scene where you want to make it feel a little more faded and foreboding, you can add vignette to create that effect. There's lots of things I haven't covered here, but I hope that this is enough to help you get started exploring post-processing for your own project. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and if you have, please be sure to click like or subscribe to the channel. Till next time, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.